Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of I finally got all my film back from a trip that happened basically four months ago. Will this be the catalyst that springs me into developing my own film instead of relying on a lab to do it? Probably not. Well, you may have heard about a recent trip I had coming up to Portland, Oregon, but what you may not have heard is that a certain pandemic was, and still is, sweeping through the nation, so we had to cancel. And with it, cancel a trip to the legendary Portland Vegan Strip Club. I'm just as bummed as you are. So a new plan was hatched to put rubber to asphalt and drive up Central California to the Sierra Mountains and see what's good with all that fresh air, towering mountains, and abandoned buildings. Caleb also agreed to come along so that this video would have more sex appeal. If you haven't already seen his two videos from this trip, his channel is called Bad Flashes. There'll be a link in the description. So we had our plan, but what cameras do I bring? As you may know, choosing what camera to bring on a road trip is one of those things that even Socrates and Plato couldn't answer, much less someone like me who has an IQ equivalent to a loaf of bread. Eventually, I settled on bringing the Dynamic Duo, the Mamiya 7 and the Contax T2. All I knew was I wanted to shoot medium format, and I knew we were going to be doing some hiking and exploring, so the lightweight 6x7 setup on the Mamiya 7 was ideal. The insane amount of sharpness that comes with the 80mm f4 was just an added bonus. So with that, we hit the road in the Swagger Wagon, which is my 1990 second generation 4 -wheel. Along the 395 highway, we found some cool abandoned buildings and just had to shoot them. I loaded up some HP5 and we got down to business to defeat the Huns. I shot my HP5 at 800 ISO, which is one stop underexposed. I did this because I wanted to add a little extra grainy contrast to the photos, especially considering the subjects. This roll uh, ended up having some light leaks. Every once in a while, the Mamiya 7 will not wind a roll very tight, which may be because I anxiously wind the film advance too many times after the roll is done. The light leaks actually worked very well in some cases, like this shot, where they kind of perfectly frame the pole, which might have been a stripper pole should we have gone forth on that aforementioned Portland trip. <laughs> I don't know how Kyle McDougall does this sh by himself. I always get the feeling like someone's watching me. For all my black and white needs, I brought my go-to Ilford HP5, but I also decided to try out some Ilford XP2, which is a uniquely C41 black and white film. For all my color work, I shot Portra 400 and Cinestill 800T, though the 800T was mostly for shooting at night. I also brought along a wildcard film, Ektachrome, 100 for 120, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We stayed in Lone Pine for the first night, and after we got to the hotel, disinfected the entire room, and settled in, we headed out to go shoot Alabama Hills, which is one of my favorite places to shoot. Thank <laughs> you. 
least my camera didn't die. <laughs> I shot with Portra 400, rated at 160 ISO, for some sweet overexposure. As the sun went down, I shot closer and closer to box speed for that extra range. The sunset was pretty romantic, and I got to share it with the one I care about the most. That's right, my Mamiya 7. Unfortunately, uh, earlier in the day, Caleb had his Pentax 645 what? just utterly die on him. I heard that. Don't you f***ing tell me. So, like a good friend, I told him, just f***ing deal with it. Just kidding. I wrapped my arms around Caleb, the sweet baby boy, and whispered into his ear, just use my Contax T2 for the rest of the trip. Oh, wow. At least my camera didn't die. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for the Contax T2 shots for this video. As we drove through town at blue hour, we noticed a lot of hotels with cool neon signs, and we just had to shoot them. Frankly, it was out of our control. The next morning, we woke up at the ass crack of dawn. Actually, before dawn. So naturally, we kind of felt like shit. It's too early for these shenanigans. Admittedly, staying up till 1 a.m. the night before, chugging whiskey, gossiping about film cameras, and about how Kyle McDougal is the goat was also part of the reason. Anyway, just like the Donner party on the Oregon Trail, it was time for us to hitch up our wagon and hit the trail northwest. Well, maybe not just like the Donner party, because we didn't have any cattle. We had some time to burn, so we aimlessly walked around town until we couldn't take it anymore, and we hopped in the car to check out some other spots. So we hit this lakeside trail in what seemed like gale force winds. What? After being constantly barraged with kicked up dirt that honestly started to feel like enemy shrapnel, we finally arrived at this cool little beach that had these perfectly vertical rock formations. If you're into geology, this is probably very interesting to you. 
nerd. After I obliterated my portrait, I switched to Ilford XP2, and again, I rated it at 800. If anyone out there is wondering, I shot most of these shots at f11 because I found that the already sharp Mamiya glass is even sharper at f11. Anyway, we got back to town and took it easy in the hotel. I loaded up the Mamiya 7 with some Cinestill 800T and took a shot of the toilet before we blew it up. And if after that sentence you're still down to watch, I commend you. Anyway, nighttime fell upon us and we went out to shoot some more. So there I was, taking a shot of this hotel lobby, and a guy pulled up in his car obstructing part of the frame. And while initially I was ready to punch him in the throat, I actually think it ended up working out great, making the composition and the story in the photo a bit stronger. Camera buddies. The next day we headed to a lake where it was literally colder and windier than the ice planet Hoth. Are you ready to check it out? You have way more energy than I do. <laughs> like an eager beaver, I loaded up the Mamiya 7 with some HV5. While I did my best to get some long exposure shots, the wind was kicking up some frozen lake water that was splashing my camera, the lens, and my nearly frostbitten skin. At that point, I was ride or die for the shot though. I figured, at the very least, if I kept shooting, some explorer would stumble upon my perfectly preserved frozen carcass desperately clutching the Mamiya 7. At which point, future scientists will study for years why this primitive human decided to use an outdated technology and ultimately die of overexposure to the elements just for a photo that, when developed, was compositionally not that impressive. So we hopped on the first train out of that town and uh, headed even farther north, stopping only once to consider if we should keep going over the mountain pass because the conditions were getting worse and the pass might close on the way back. So we said, F it, we're young, dumb, and broke from buying film cameras, so let's just do it.
This was probably the most fun shoot of the day, in my opinion. We stopped at this abandoned house as it just started snowing. I threw some XP2 in the Mamiya and blasted through it in no time. As the snow started to fall harder, we raced up through the pass and back to town. Like the Millennium Falcon in my favorite movie, Solo, a Star Wars story. There was one more abandoned building along the way, and so, naturally, we found ourselves shooting at it. Again, I powered through a roll of HP5, rated at 800. Back at the hotel, Caleb and I thought it would be a good idea to drink whiskey on a completely empty stomach. So, yeah, we got drunk really, really fast. As the sun was starting to go down, I figured now is as good a time as any to shoot some of the new, at the time, Ectochrome for 120. You made a mistake, bro, asking me to do this. <laughs> I'm not really a slide film guy, but I was kind of drunk, so anything goes, I guess. Of course I rated it at 100, though I was tempted to shoot it at 3200 like all the pros do. After dinner, we headed out for one more round of night photography. Of course, I was back on that Cinestill 800T goodness. day the fun was over and it was time for us to head back to Corona Angeles where reality was waiting to slap us back into gear or quarantine for four months as we'd find out. But we couldn't resist stopping at one more location that we had spotted on our way up the other day. I shot with my last roll of XP2.
Inside one of the buildings, I stumbled upon this perfectly placed boot on a mattress that just made for the perfect composition. And I swear to Zeus, Ares, Poseidon, Matt Day, etc., that I did not place it there. Anyway, that's all. It was nice to escape some of the craziness that was starting to happen as coronavirus ramped up at the time. And uh, now I'm back with some photos that I think don't entirely suck. It was really hard for me to choose, but ultimately I think this is my favorite photo from the trip. I like the pastel colors of the Portra 400 and the framing on Caleb. I mean, he's just standing there, but he evokes so much emotion, right? So yeah, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed and are staying safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Unless of course I get killed by a volcano before then. Peace.